Welcome to Monet Cafe Studio. I'm happy to bring you another in the pastel techniques series called Twinkling Stars. Now I have taught on how to create stars with soft pastel before, but this is a brand new way and I'm excited to share it with you. Won't you come into the studio and let's learn how. For this painting, I'll be working on a surface that I love. It's called Pastel Matte, and it is a surface that takes multiple mediums. It is water friendly. I like to use these pads because they have many different colors. And for this painting, I will once again be working on white. I wanted to control some of the color in my background. And if you watched my last tutorial, I divided up one large sheet to create multiple paintings. And the first one was of a beautiful iridescent hummingbird. That's the tutorial right before this one. But for this painting, I wanted to use this beautiful reference image from unsplash.com. Thank you to Rostislav Savchin. I hope I'm saying that right. And I'm blessed to have a few followers from Ukraine here on my channel. Hi, Lesia. Uh, so it's always nice to get to know you guys. The area that I have marked off here is approximately eight and a half inches by six inches. And you know, I gotta capture this gorgeous glow of that sky. The sky is obviously lighter than the trees, but it's still pretty dark. And it's got a lot of these gorgeous turquoise blues and purples in it. So I thought I'd start with this set. It's from Richeson Hand Rolled Pastels. It's their teals set. And look at all these gorgeous teals. So I'm just making some choices here. I know the sky is dark, but I still wanna capture that luminous feel behind the sky. Um, they're just really in that photo, you could see it too, that there was just a brilliance to the sky, even though some of the values were a little darker. So I don't wanna go too dark too soon, and I'm gonna use a layering effect to capture all of those beautiful colors in the sky. And often when I wanna create that luminosity, with a soft pastel painting, I'll start with an underpainting that is more transparent or translucent. And in this case, I'm going to be using acrylic ink. You could also use watercolor and you could use just pastel and blend it, but I think you'll see this results in a very luminous uh, effect. So this is just a De La Rowney acrylic ink. It's called turquoise. I had not used it in a while. It was a little clogged in my dropper there, um, but I'm going to combine this with some water and this nice brush this is a watercolor brush uh, I'll share the links to all of this it's made by Royal it's a three-quarter inch brush and it holds a lot of water in the brush which allows me to move the color around easily now I have this little container it looks super dirty but it's the one I use with acrylic inks and acrylic inks are permanent so when it dries it kind of stays stained if you don't clean it out right away um, but I have one little well with water I just dipped into and one of the wells with the acrylic ink turquoise. And then I use the top little well there to kind of mix a combination of water and acrylic ink. And so I realized pretty quickly that it's, um, if, if it's too thick, it's going to come out um, a little bit more uh, opaque and not as flowing. So you can see me now just adding mostly water to the background and you may want to do that to begin with if you use this technique. Just apply a nice coat of water before applying the acrylic ink. And I'm working flat here. I don't often work flat and I don't always recommend it, but sometimes I just need to change things up a bit. So you can see I'm speeding it up here and you can see how nicely this applied once I really uh, got it going. This is just a quick station break to ask you if you would go ahead and like this video. It really does help YouTube to share the video more. I'd really appreciate that. Of course, subscribe and leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. Also consider becoming a patron of mine on my Patreon page. It is a great way to support this channel for only $5 a month, but you also unlock hundreds of lessons with extra content and commentary and I get to see your work. It's a lot of fun. Now, what I'm doing here is I have let this dry and I'm using a marker. This is a grayscale marker. It's Tombow uh, grayscale markers. Again, I'll have all these product links in the description. I often like to use markers rather than charcoal or pencil because this is more permanent and it's not. I'm not gonna lose my sketch if I go to add any other mediums, um, especially if I was to add more water-based mediums. 
which I will in this case, add one more acrylic ink color of some beautiful purple. So my goal here is to capture that feeling of evergreens. You can see these are evergreen trees. And something that um, instantly says evergreen is those jagged, almost horizontal um, lines of how the branches grow out, like I said, kind of horizontally. And I'll accentuate that even more as I paint. So here's this beautiful purple. It's one of my favorite colors of acrylic inks. It's called Purple Lake and it makes such a nice dark. I'm going to be using just a couple of little fan brushes. All I, I always use these old kind of tattered brushes, um, but I find they just add nice texture. So I'm putting some of this Purple Lake in one of my little wells, and again, I'll be using some water to dilute it, and I'm even combining it, letting it meld together with a little bit of the turquoise I had before, and uh, just creating these um, kind of jagged edges. You can see my paper is still a little bit wet, which makes for a nice, um, almost like melting into the paper. And I wanted to give these trees almost like a feeling of worship. So I've over-exaggerated how they're like leaning in, almost hugging the sky as they're leaning almost in worship, praising the stars and our creator. And so you can see how I'm making these jagged edges, but if you do this, try not to make them so consistent. Leave some spaces um, that are a little uh, impromptu, not, not a pattern in other words. Have it uh, just have a little randomness to some of your jaggedness to the sides of it. Now, I decided to make some of them feel even a little further away. I will accentuate that depth and that perspective as I add pastels with a change of color and value. Right now, they're all pretty much the same color, but you'll watch the magic happen perspectively um, with, again, just these beautiful, easy things you can do with color theory and art theory to create the feeling of depth and dimension in a two-dimensional surface or on a two-dimensional surface. So now I decided my sky was a little too light. You can see it's really a lot lighter than the photo. So I'm adding more of the Purple Lake and Turquoise and water, quite a bit of water here so that it will... Um, still be quite luminous. Now you can do this better with acrylic ink than you can with watercolor. Watercolor is not permanent. So sometimes when you add more water, your initial layer of watercolor will kind of move around on you. So now I'm picking out some nice darks. These are actually both of those were the Terry Ludwig eggplant color. It's a dark, dark purple. I kind of equate it to that purple lake acrylic ink that I used. If you apply the purple lake um, concentrated without any water, it's a dark, dark purple as well. But this uh, eggplant color by Terry Ludwig Pastels is a favorite um, people love this color because it's not black. Uh, it appears dark, it appears almost black, but it still has some color to it. Now I'm speeding up a lot of this because I think this is a really simple painting. I think you can get the idea and I really wanted to get to this effect of the stars. Now here's where I was saying, I'm going to create the illusion of depth by basically just changing the color and the value. Value is the lightness or darkness. It's a little bit lighter than the Terry Ludwig eggplant color I put down and it's a little cooler. It's gonna make the color or the, the, the subject matter feel further away. And I am adding a little of the same color. It's just a pretty little turquoisey, really kind of a blue color um, to some of the trees that are dark to give the feeling of light catching on some of the branches. Okay, now what am I doing? I'm using a lot of fun mediums here, right? I decided to start instead of with regular stick form of pastels to use these pan pastels. They're called pan pastels because then they're in these little pans. Looks like a little makeup compact. And this is one of the little applicator tools. It's a sponge. It looks super dirty, but I've actually I clean it off just by wiping it on a paper towel and you can even wash these with water and soap and dry them. Um, but I decided to go with the pan pastels. Again, I want to create that sky to feel very soft. I don't mind if there's a little texture in it, but I thought, let me try this first to get a smooth application rather than um, the stick pastels. And you could totally use stick pastels for this. I was just having some fun. So if you do though, you can you can blend them. Um, now I, I tried that pink with a little white and I didn't like it. I thought the pink was a little too dark, but uh, I would recommend don't add the white in it. It looked just too light there. So I keep using this pink color and I'm basically just blending and 
and melding and um, getting those colors to where they kind of merge together. And I'm being careful. This is a big sponge tool, but I'm being careful just to sort of get it down into the crevices um, of the trees, that skyline behind the trees. And you'll see another trick that I do in a minute to um, kind of pull that sky down around the trees a little bit. So now you can see that I've still got this sky looking quite luminous. You can still even see a little bit of that acrylic ink um, um, underpainting underneath it and um, it's starting to feel like the values and the colors I'm trying to represent and now is where I'm using another little tool it's another little pan pastel tool um, the name of the little tools for applicators is called soft tools uh, pan pastels is a great company they are now marketed through golden golden paints and and uh, art products and uh, it's just really a fun product but like I said this whole painting could be done with just pastels you don't have to have all the acrylic ink and um, pan pastels so um, just as I always say use what you have and now I want to get more of the richness to the sky and there is um, a gorgeous combination of colors when we first look at things um, before you've been painting for a long time we often like this reference image might just say oh I see some blue and I see some purple um, but we can actually layer and combine colors in a way to create much more interest and drama now I'm adding a little bit of purple um, to the sky and here you'll see I'm using another one of the pretty little teal or turquoise type of colors from the Richeson hand rolled pastels and can you see those colors starting to combine and this is a little bit of a lighter value magenta that I'm carving down into the trees and I use this negative painting effect um, to carve some of the shapes of the trees often when we paint trees we'll paint more of just the general shape of the tree we're not trying to create all of the individual branches and we carve in like I'm doing right here uh, negatively to create some of the shapes and I think you can see many of the colors I've added are some beautiful purples and magentas and teals and blues and by the way you can always slow these videos down on YouTube there's a little gear icon to the lower right right and you can change the speed to slow it down I always say turn the volume down because my voice will sound really weird now watch the drama happen here this is a, a gorgeous I think it's a Sennelier pastel a beautiful blue it's almost like a little leans a little bit to teal not much and I add a little more of that down in between some of the trees can you see the drama happening now and often in an upper sky things are quite a bit darker even a daytime sky the values are a little bit darker when you get Get up to the heavens and um, so I'm feeling good about this now I'm developing a little bit more of these trees and I'm developing the background trees a little bit more giving them a little more shape and structure and uh, I have a little bit more that I want to do in the sky before I add the stars I found this pretty little blue I wanted something that was just a little bit lighter and I've slowed it down here so you can see I'm just glazing very gently glazing this whole process has been just a layering of color and letting the color play together um, often when I first started and often beginner artists we just over layer and we're we have such a, a hard pressure that it doesn't allow the colors to interact with each other now this is a um, an iridescent pastel it's by Mount Vision it's actually one of the ones I used in my last hummingbird painting and I thought it might be neat because this is a shimmery starry sky but I tried this one and oh boy that was too light you can immediately see that was too light so I just got another one of the pretty blues and just kind of blended some things together um, this other pretty blue that I used before uh, just kind of got rid of that light um, mark that I made but look at the colors in the sky can you see it just magically coming to life I actually liked the textural feel that I was getting from some of the marks I was making but because I wanted the stars to be the star of the show I thought let me go ahead and do some blending now this what I'm using here it's a packing peanut you know like you get packages and there's those little styrofoam things that protect your package it works as a great blending tool for pastel matte for this particular type of surface now I'm using that pretty little turquoise I think this is probably a Giro pastel 
Chanel. It's um, it's from Paris. It's a French company, and I love these pastels. They're smaller and and cylindrical, circular, um, and they're just really they're kind of not too hard and not too soft. But I'm using it to give um, an idea. You know how the sun shines on trees and it makes some areas look greener or warmer? Well, there's still the same idea of an effect in a night sky. Um, they're going to be lighter values from the sky and the lights shining on the trees, but the highlights are going to be cooler. They're not going to be greens and yellowy greens. They're going to be more teals and um, turquoise colors. And so this just gave that feeling of some of the night sky light reflecting down on some of these trees. And uh, I was feeling really good about this. I really enjoyed creating this painting. And now to add the stars, I chose two pastels. I'll talk about these two colors when I go to apply them, but I first want to give credit to the artist that I discovered this technique from. Her name is Jean Smith. She is a fantastic artist and she creates these gorgeous wave paintings. And she recently shared on Instagram this little technique to create the water, the spray on waves. And she basically uses a toothbrush and a light colored pastel, I mean, oh my goodness, look at this wave, isn't it gorgeous, um, to apply to her pastel painting. Now, I accidentally started the process here and forgot to cover up the trees. I don't want my stars layered on top of the trees, so let me show you my trick. To protect my trees from getting stars on them, I got a piece of tracing paper. I just layered it lightly over my painting and I traced around the the trees now i didn't get super fussy with this i just got a general idea of the shape of the trees and then i uh, cut it out and basically i just tape it on top of where the trees are and if i get a few stars in areas where those trees are poking through you know i can kind of correct that later i'll show you how to do that but i taped it down just so it wouldn't wiggle around now here this is the, literally the first time i was trying this what you use is alcohol. That's at least what Jean Smith mentioned was alcohol. And I used 70% alcohol. And you can see this is uh, like a lavender color. I like to use, when I do stars, two colors. I like to use one that's a little warmer and one that's a little cooler, not just white, white. So this pretty little lavender I used, and it took me a while to figure this out, but you don't wanna have too much alcohol on your toothbrush. You wanna kind of, uh, uh, have it kind of a thick application of pastel, not super diluted. But I think you'll be able to see that it really is creating that impression of stars. You know those, like if you go way out in the country, I happen to be where my parents live, they're so far away from light pollution and lights of a city, you can see layers of stars, it's so gorgeous. It just really makes you realize how little we are and how big God is. I just love that. So now I'm using the lighter pastel. It's a little bit um, warmer in color temperature, even though it's still very light. And I'm just sprinkling in more stars. Here I've zoomed in a little bit. I think I, if I used a white, white pastel, I'd get more of a, a light value like Gene Smith got. So to do that, I decided I was going to crush up a little bit of these pastels. I took my lavender pastel, I used an X-Acto blade, and I just shaved off a little bit of the pastel in these little chunks. I thought the chunks were a little large, um, so that's why I used this little mortar and pestle, a little, you know, a little bowl with the little pestle that you crush up with. And I crushed some of the pastels just to be able to apply them to my surface. What I'm trying to do is to create some stars that have a little bit more oomph, a little more impact. You know, the ones that kind of twinkle, that really stand out. And so what I'm doing, let me zoom in here so you can see better, is I'm just picking up a few of these little particles and I'm going to sprinkle them onto my surface. And here you'll be able to see how they're just kind of lightly falling and they're a little brighter than the ones that were diluted with the alcohol. Obviously, if they're diluted with alcohol, they're gonna dry a little lighter. So can you see how this is making some of the stars just appear um, to be more brilliant? 
And now how are these going to stick to the surface? Um, this was a little bit of the kind of warmer, lighter colors I did the same thing with. But back to my question, how are these going to stay? I pick up my painting, they're just going to fall right off, right? Well, this is this right here is the same method I've used before where I just get some little uh, pastel dust and layer it onto my surface. I'm even moving it around strategically in places where I want it. And then what I'm going to do is take another piece of tracing paper and I'm also going to tape it down so it doesn't wiggle around a lot. Then you need just some sort of cylindrical object. You could use a rolling pin. I just had a jar of black beans, so it doesn't matter what you use. And I'm just pressing and rolling, pressing and rolling, and I am pressing the pastels into the surface. And I have had really good luck with this technique. Now, I even after this, I go in and move some of them around and blow some of it off um, again to to get the feeling that I want. Now you can see some of my uh, stars crept under my tracing paper. So you can do the same thing with a really light touch. If you're using an X-Acto blade like this, you don't want to cut your surface. I'm just using it to move things around. And now I'm actually using the pastel stick. You want to be careful with this, not to create marks that look too contrived. You want to keep it very random. And this was just such a fun process, but I really loved using the toothbrush method to create those stars that had that real sense of depth and those little stars that are so far away and uh, these other two methods to create some of them that appeared more like the twinkling stars. So I loved this. Did you love this? I would love to hear your feedback on this video and this technique. And if you've ever tried anything like this before, also let me know if you've seen skies like this. Where were you? Me particularly, it's the mountains of North Carolina. My entire family is from there. And I just remember nights, especially cold nights, just looking up at the heavens and just feeling the Lord. And uh, I feel the Lord too when I paint. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So here's the final painting. I hope you learned a lot. I hope it blessed you. And as always, God bless and happy painting.